Amen. 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 Oh, welcome to our worship service this morning. We are happy that you are here in this new year of 2021. I can tell just by looking at you that uh, this year is already better for you than last year was, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Such so enthusiasm so for the new year. That's great. Uh, Baker Rasman is here. He's just uh, coming in a little bit tardy. But uh, if he wasn't here by the time, he was not going to be here by the time of the sermon, I would have gone and gotten him. <laughs> I'd like to mention the fact that God has adopted us as his children. We are his sons and daughters. And so he has made us to be a family. We are related to each other through the blood of Jesus. We are brothers and sisters in Christ by God's design, not by our own. And so that's something to keep in mind, especially in these times when we may have less contact with other people, just to recall who we are, that we are not in this world alone, that we are a part of a family of believers in Christ. And so with uh, some of that in mind, I would invite you to join us in our opening hymn. Please stand as we sing verses 1, 3, and 4 of all hail the power of Jesus. Now. <laughs> Consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, it says, people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children, and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins, and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured into our hearts the true light of your incarnate work. Grant that this light may shine forth in our lives through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament for this morning, the second Sunday after Christmas, is 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 4 through 15. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have chosen great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father, David, my father. Although I am but a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil, for who is able to govern this great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this, and God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, behold, I now do according to your word, Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, so that none like you has been before you, and none like you shall rise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that no other king shall compare it with you all your days. And if you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then he came to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings and made a feast for all his servants. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is Ephesians 1, verses 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him whose works are according to the counsel of his will, so that he, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also 
when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promise, Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. In honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. <clears throat> and it is this portion of God's word that will serve as a text for Vicar Rasmus' sermon, sermon a little bit later in the service. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory Glory to you, Lord. The child, Jesus, grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey, but then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them, and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Please join with me as we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God, the very God. He God did not be, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered his burial, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in the glory to the judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will lie out now. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son together as worshiped and glorified, who is spoken by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge my baptism for the remission of sins, and I hope for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, see the first two verses next, uh, I want to walk as a child of the light. <laughs> Jesus, I want to see you. 
Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We can still say that a few more days in the church calendar. Christmas runs until January 6th. So that's why the closing hymn is another Christmas hymn. Give you one more chance to sing a Christmas tune. Uh, pick the one we used to do on Christmas Day, because I know more people go to Christmas Eve service. So if you didn't make the Christmas Day service, you get a chance to sing. Go tell it on the mount. Anyways, I invite you to pray with me before I speak. Lord God, thank you so much for your many blessings. Thank you for the lives that we have. Thank you most importantly for your Holy Spirit and faith that gives us eternal life in your Son, Jesus Christ. I pray for everyone gathered here today that whatever distractions, whatever worries or anxieties they might have brought into this fellowship, that you would help them release it at this moment so that they may be in tune for what you want them to hear today, to be lifted up and encouraged in your Son, Jesus. With that said, Lord, that means I'm asking and praying that what I have to share is your words today for your people. I pray if anything is of me and not of you, that it would fall upon deaf ears and be ignored. I ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, have you ever... Uh, Seen someone do street evangelism out there sharing the gospel in the world with random strangers? The experience I always usually encounter in these moments is when I tell them I'm a believer in Jesus, then I have to somehow prove it to them. They don't, you know, they're out there to get some conversions. It's like, that's okay, how are, well, when did you believe? When did you commit your life to the Lord? Usually trip some of them up. Because I used to say, well, I've always believed in the Lord. What? How does that work? I go, it's one of my earliest memories. I can't remember not knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. By the grace of God, that's my story. That's my witness. I'm very thankful to have always known the Lord. Some of my earliest memories are praying to Jesus, even privately confessing sins to him because my mom said something I was doing was sinful. Child's play since compared to where I have grown. But uh, that's one of the earliest memories. Thankful for it. Other early memory goes along with it. My dad's vinyl music collection. Just thought, I guess I just really like those records. I like the music that came from them. like the artwork on them. Guess where that record collection is now? Gone. It doesn't exist. Well, it exists probably. It's not in my possession, not in his possession. He went digital. Don't know what he was thinking personally. And I never voiced that I would have liked him. Didn't know he was just gonna get rid of him. <coughs> it's gone. But Jesus, he's the same yesterday, today. And forever and he still remains for me and I'm thankful for him in my life still to today one of those records that really stood out to me was uh, Neil Young's album decade it was a compilation and recently I went down memory lane looking it up on YouTube and it's a song old man there's a line in there, he's singing, he's a 24-year-old, hey, old man, I'm 24, so much more, look at my life. And I remember flashing back to, you know, sixth grade, I had that CD, listening to it, doing homework, thinking as a 12-year-old, man, 24, that's already old. <laughs> he's... And now add about a dozen more beyond 24 to my life, so now I'm really old. But 12, in our gospel reading, we saw Jesus, even though he's the ancient of days, no beginning, no end. Even him, he's 12. Amazing. He had this moment, being 12. And the first verse of the reading, <clears throat> even though... He's God Almighty, creator of all things. It says, he grew. 
And so some of the stuff we're remembering during this 12 days of Christmas, the incarnation, even though Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever, he himself grew. And that's because of the incarnation. And you go, well, if he's always the same, how can he grow and how can he become strong, he who's all-powerful, and how can he grow in wisdom, he who's all-knowing? It's one of these great mysteries. He's always the same. He's always God, always all-powerful, always has those attributes, but for a time, and this is doctrinal terms here, for a time, he chose to be in the state of humiliation. This state in which he did not make use of his divine attributes, his divine power and knowledge. He chose to lower himself and live life like you and me. To be a baby and to grow. And he didn't make it as long as I've made it. He died before he got to my age I'm at right now. And he died so that we might have eternal life. It's good stuff. The reason that Jesus lowered himself to grow. This is his state of humiliation. It ended when he said on the cross, it is finished. No more. He entered into the state of exaltation. All glory that he fully deserves, he now has. Full use his divine attributes. When he descended into hell that we confess, he was that wasn't the time of suffering. He went there and he was preaching and proclaiming victory over death at that time. So Jesus grew. And for us, we sang that song, children of the light. We are children of God, children of the light. And so the Jesus growing, that, that's something we do too. And our kids, all of us, we, you know, we, we grow strong, we grow wise. Some of us, though, we've hit that point where we're not growing stronger. It's not, it's, not, it's not always upward mobility in that way. But wisdom, this is something we can continue to grow in. We can continue to grow in wisdom of the Lord and intimate relational knowledge with God. All the days of our life as children of God. This is good news for us. And for our kids, this is something we need to be praying for. Our kids, for our grandkids, for our neighbor's kids, our friend's kids, that they would grow in knowledge of the Lord and in faith. And we see here in this reading what was happening that helped Jesus grow in this faith. Now, granted, he's the son of God. It's going to happen, right? But you see elements, ingredients of what sparks this growth in knowledge and faith of the Lord. His parents, Mary and Joseph, they took Jesus to Jerusalem for the Passover. They took him where they were supposed to take their whole family to Jerusalem for the Passover. It's commanded, wherever you are, you need to go to Jerusalem for the Passover. Now they forgot Jesus. That probably would be a big heart attack. You lost the Son of God. We lost our daughter for a brief moment one time. It was scary. She was still really young, about two years old. She just got to where she could open the door and walk out. And Jessica fell asleep for a moment. And when she woke up, there was no Bella. We lived in a crazy place in California. Not saying California's crazy. We lived in a crazy place in California. There were... Bobcats and mountain lions, sometimes even in our backyard, getting at our chickens. And we lived on a little two-lane highway, 
curvy. It's supposed to be 25 miles per hour because it was so curvy and skinny. But uh, people drove 50 down that road. And most people's houses were there on the road because it is California. You don't really have land space. The mountains were our backyard. Crazy. Where is she? Heart attack. She's running up and down the street screaming. She's pregnant with Rocky at the time. Could you imagine losing the Son of God? You're traveling. I mean, it makes sense. The whole family traveled together. Everyone from Nazareth caravaning together. He's probably off of some cousin somewhere. Some uncle. Gone. Oh, no. But where is he? He's where he's supposed to be. He's in the house of the Lord. Where he's supposed to be. Which is where we're supposed to be. People nowadays say all the time, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Who gets happy when that's said? The devil or the Lord? I think we know. Yeah, you don't have to come here. It's not like you have to check a certain number of times to be here to be saved. But this is where we're meant to be. This is where growth happens. The word of God is given. The word of God is proclaimed. That's where we grow. We have communion. What do we say at the end? May this body and blood of our Lord strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith. This is not what we need to forsake. So growing our children up in the faith here in church is where this happens. And another key ingredient in this reading, something that Jesus had the opportunity to do. Where was he? He was sitting with the elders, with the teachers as a 12-year-old. And what's he doing? He's asking questions. He's getting to listen to them. So we need to make sure there's some key ingredients here. Make sure kids, all ages, make sure even, because we're all children, all ages, need to have this opportunity to ask questions and to listen and to learn. No question should be not allowed. In particular for the youth, this should be the case. And we know that this is a problem sometimes. Youth, we know this long time, they hit 18, they leave the house, where are they? They don't always go to church, usually when they stop going to church. And statistically, they don't oftentimes come back until they're 30, sometimes 40 years old, and then it's oftentimes because, well, now I'm married and I have kids. I want them to be in church. And it may not be for salvation purposes because they've been gone for 12 15 years themselves, they come back as well, maybe I need community for my kids. Maybe I need some morality and some guidance. I see they're, you know, getting a little wonky themselves. Let me, let me get them in a church. And there's studies that have been done on this. The LCMS, our church body, did a study on this. They looked at confirmation students from the years 2006 to 2009. They ran the study for 10 years, tracking them. The study released 2017. Of those confirmation students, there's 2006 to 2009, only a third of them were still in their home congregation, which isn't necessarily that bad of a thing, because you know how it is. You graduate, you go to college, you may be getting a job somewhere not even close. Going to your home church may not be an option, certainly wouldn't have been for me. But another third of those students completely lost no idea where they are. Church in 10 years lost complete track of them. We don't even know where they are. Probably means you don't know where the parents are either. Then the other third, the other third, 10% of the other third actively says not a believer, doesn't go to church. Some of the others still in the LCMS of that third, but just a different congregation. That's good. And then some of the others, some other church, because, well, I don't know what you were confirming or confessing then if you can just go to some other church. But you're looking at it over 30%, probably 40% gone from the church that were brought up in the LCMS from those years. Pretty intense. Now we also have studies that tell us why this sometimes happens. Two of the big reasons this happens. One of the, num the number one answer, the faith just doesn't seem reasonable to me and I didn't have opportunities to ask questions, or my questions weren't answered. Kind of summing that up, that's the number one. Question, didn't have time to ask questions, didn't have questions answered. So we want to make sure we have time for that here, to allow questions, to not just 
slap questions down, to take the time to answer them. The second reason given, they didn't own their faith. They didn't own their faith. So I make sure that there's opportunities. You see Jesus here. He's owning the faith, right? I'm in my father's house, guys. He's asking questions. He's listening to the teachers. They're even amazed at what he has to offer. Now, he's the son of God, and I'm sure he has a lot more offer. But I bet listening to our kids, ask questions, hearing their answers, I bet we'd probably be pretty amazed too when we have that relationship in time. So let me give an example. Opportunity that came along this week. Question asked how it, uh, how it was treated. It actually happened with my daughter. So she's at um, the Lilburn City Park with Jessica, my wife. And guess what she sees? She sees a lady dressed very much the way I'm dressed. Except all black. Except this lady also has something covering her face. And the only things you see are her eyes. All black. But there's also a strip of cloth right here. Even here. What is these lies? And what's my daughter do? Mom, look at her! <laughs> look at her! What happened? Look at her, she's all tangled up. I asked permission. I knew she'd be here. I go, can I share this story? Wow. What a question. And most, you know, it's rude to point. <laughs> don't, do, don't do that, right? Uh, but Jessica then goes, you know, she's, she's dressed that way because it's what she believes. You know, I already had this conversation with her once because we go to this park a good bit and a good number of Muslims are there covered. And Jessica had the conversation once before too. She's kind of shocked. She goes, oh, is she Muslim? <laughs> like, oh, she remembers pretty well. No, it's Muslim. Not Muslim, Muslim. That's what they believe. But Jessica really took it to heart that day, and I'm thankful for it because she goes, well, she probably answer this, right? Show that it's not just, oh, it's some other different belief, and just let it go. Engage with this, this woman. So Jessica sits with the woman a while, while Bella's playing, Gets permission. Hey, can we can we talk? My daughter's very interested. She likes to know what other people believe. She's very concerned about God and truth. Do you mind if she comes and talks? So Bella comes over, and the lady explains, you know, I'm dressed this way because it's the highest level. That's the terminology she uses. The highest level. The Prophet Muhammad, his wives dress this way. And so I want to follow and be at the highest level. Amazing. Bella really had it right. She really is all tangled up, isn't she? In deception. In lies, trying to get to some, get to God through dressing a certain way. And so then, Bella asked, well, what about Jesus? The lady goes, well, we, be we love Jesus. We believe he's a prophet. But we don't believe that he died. And Bella, he died. <laughs> he died. And then that gives Jessica the opportunity. Yeah, he died. We believe that Jesus died for our sins. So one telling it to Bella, but then also the lady know. Taking the, this opportunity. Yeah, we believe he died for our sins. We do believe he came back from life, came back from the dead, ascended into heaven. And then so Bella... So you don't have Christmas? No, we don't celebrate Christmas. Well, that's the, that's the end of it, right? So, what's up with that? <laughs> Completely shot. Bella goes back to like spinning around on the little, uh, I don't know what you call that, merry-go-round type thing, spinning around. Jessica's still over here with the mom. She's yelling out, isn't that wrong? <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's hard, right? Out of the mouths of babes, right? And then later, um, <clears throat> Jessica's with Bella. She's like, "Isn't that wrong?" You know, it's like, "Yeah, it's it's not right. They don't they don't worship the true Lord." And Bella, of course, has to go. Well, I worship the one true Lord. Like, yeah. And then obviously, there's like other families around too, seeing all this transpire. 
Amazing. So, I mean, it could have very easily been, oh, it's a different belief. It's rude to point. Shut it down. Right? But I think the whole process became a very good learning moment for Bella, as well as for Jessica, and certainly the other woman. And Bella's like, well, can, will she worship the one true Lord? Jessica goes, I sure hope so. We'll pray that she does. I didn't know she said that, but that night during our prayers, I prayed that that woman would know the Lord would come to faith. Just a great example of little kids asking questions. If questions like that are kind of just swept, just swept around the rug a little too much, now obviously Bella still in this growing process. Still has to learn. It's not right to just point and scream where everyone at the whole park can hear. Right? Still a learning process. We're all in process. We're all still growing. But questions need to be asked. There needs to be room for questions to be answered. And we're working on that here. This needs to be a safe place, and we're working on it. Um, the high school class right now is going through a whole series on just these types of questions. Who is Jesus? Did he really live? Did he really die? Did he really come back from the grave? What about other religions? Why is Jesus the way, the truth, and the life, and other religions not? What about hell? What oh, These questions are there. We want this to be a safe place. We're making room for these types of questions. Um, and when the questions are asked in other studies, we need to make sure that they're not just immediately shot down. But yeah, that's a tough question. I don't necessarily agree with what God does all the time. I agree what he does is true and it's good. It's not what I would do, but I'm not God. Right? That's why we have problems here sometimes. Because his ways are not our ways. And so it is difficult. It is challenging. We need to be, make room for people to walk. So in this new year, moving ahead, we do have some things planned. Uh, we're starting family night again. You see that bulletin. Uh, family night's starting. And if you were at the Thanksgiving dinner, you know that we had a family at each table. We had masks on until you're sitting. It wasn't buffet-style serving. We had people that had masks on, gloves on, individuals that cooked the meal serving. We're still keeping distance, still doing those things. Uh, but we're going to start meeting. After the dinner, there's going to be a time for the kids. Uh, it's going to be an art night. Um, young kids, like maybe Rocky's age, up to about 10-year-olds, 5th grade, 6th grade. Um, to be with Jessica, she's going to have some art. We're going to have 10 students for that. We've got three students. Three kids already committed to come that aren't part of this church. So hopefully they're going to be coming. And I know someone has said they uh, will bring their granddaughter, who is a part of the church. that before that aren't normally here at the church. So hopefully time for them to learn, grow through art. During that time we'll have the adults in the sanctuary. The kids can keep the fellowship hall because of the tables. And that's spread out. Our classrooms you know, won't allow for the distancing needed right now to make sure no one gets the virus. But we're going to have the adults in here. We're already in here normally, so we can be here. We can be spread out. I got one student from Gwinnett, uh, Georgia Gwinnett College messaged me over Christmas break. It's a student that I had met who's not a believer. He said, I'd like to come to a Bible study. Great. So we'll start doing it then. You can come get a free meal too. Hopefully he'll come. Uh, but it's going to be comparative religions initially because that's the launching pad when I go to the college. All religions can't be true because they contradict each other, which is true and why. That's the launch pad. Since I'm hopefully going to keep inviting those students here, maybe they'll come for a free meal, even though it's a bit of a drive for them. I heard they said the cafeteria food wasn't always the best. I think, I think Deb can beat them. So hopefully we can get them here. And it's comparative religions. So if you know people that would be into that, it will be like an exploring the faith type study. No questions barred. Let's talk. Let's share. Um, we know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. We don't have to be afraid of questions or doubts. Because the truth always prevails. Right always comes to light. It's going to happen. If we trust God. So in closing, we want this to be a place that we can have growth. We're all children of God, and we need to be able to grow in wisdom. We know that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, which means he loves you. He's always for you. He's always coming towards you.
to bring you closer and closer to the Father. He's always there. The records, other things in this life that we attach ourselves to, even people, they may fail us, they may go astray, they may get lost. That song, Old Man, the whole line in it is Neil Young <clears throat> said he was a rich hippie and he bought a big ranch in California. And he said there was an old ranch hand that lived there with his wife. He took care of the ranch. And he, the ranch guy was like, tell me, what would you do to get all this money to buy this place as a young man? And Neil says, I just got lucky. But he realized that that man had a wife that loved him. And he had, and here he is sitting alone in this paradise. And he's sitting there saying, you know, I, I'm a lot like you were. I just need someone to love me. All right. He's, he talks about it. Love lost. Right. Having love lost. And counting that cost. The most important thing is love. And we know that no matter what happens in this life, whatever is lost, whatever is damaged, Jesus is there. He loves you. He's always with you. And we get to grow as children of the light in him. Amen. God bless you guys. had a, quite a number of prayer requests this past week, uh, just in the last couple of days as a matter of fact, and so we want to be sure to include these people in our prayers. Uh, Pat Messer called yesterday and indicated that she has to have, uh, undergo some tests on Tuesday connected to uh, some heart issues that uh, she has had. And so we're praying for Pat that she would be sure of the Lord's care for her. We pray for uh, Carrie Holder, who I was informed this past week has been dealing with a blood disorder for this past year. Carrie, the wife of our former pastor, uh, Scott Holder, uh, she has gotten better apparently, but still not fully recovered from all of that. Pray for the Joyce family, John and uh, Mary Lou live in the same house as their son and his family, and Katie is under quarantine because of coronavirus, and so we pray for the entire Joyce family. We continue to pray for Brian Green, uh, brother of our member Karen Collinsworth, as he continues dealing with cancer that can spread to his bones and to his lungs. Uh, we pray for a number of friends of Debbie Brochu. She found out about these situations within just such a very short time. A friend Doreen, who is in hospice care at this time with the expectation of uh, her life in this world extending for just a matter of days, perhaps even hours. And her Doreen's sister, Chris, who has been diagnosed with breast cancer for the second time now. And we pray for Debbie's friends, David and Nikki Knazer, uh, who are dealing with the COVID-19 virus that they have uh, been infected with. And so all of these people, uh, I would encourage you to lift up in prayer as we will now this morning. Please stand <coughs> and join your hearts and your minds with me as we speak to our Heavenly Father. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that your Son, the eternal Word, became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Extend his praise, O Lord, into all the world, that many more with us would come to hope in his steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, your Son diligently heard the Word of God and grew in wisdom and stature 
submissive to his earthly parents and always about your business and in your house. Keep the families of your church so also your church here at Oak Road, abiding in your word, eager to be found among your word and sacraments, and always treasuring your divine wisdom and favor. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, right, right. Heavenly Father, you gave your servant Solomon unsurpassed wisdom to rule your people Israel, chiefly the wisdom that begins in fearing you. Give to the leaders and elected officials of our nation wisdom for their task to discern between good and evil and to govern this people in peace and quietness. Be gracious to preserve our president and president-elect our governor and all legislators and judges. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, give patience and endurance to all who are sick or in any need. We name before you a number of people this morning. We pray for Debbie Brochie's friends, Doreen, who is in hospice care. If it is your will to take her home soon, we pray that you would give to her even now the certainty of your great love for her. And the glories that you have prepared for all those who believe in Jesus, the glories prepared for them in heaven. We pray for Doreen's sister, Chris, as she has been diagnosed with breast cancer for the second time. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would extend your healing hand upon her and restore health and strength to her once again. We pray your blessing on David and Nikki Knazer as they have contracted the coronavirus. We ask the Lord that you would watch over them and keep them safe in your care. And though they have only mild symptoms now, we pray that you would prevent them from having more serious difficulties and restore them to health again, we pray. We ask your blessing as well upon the Joyce family, John and Mary Lou, as well as their son and daughter-in-law, Katie, particularly, who's been quarantined. We pray that you would keep your protection surrounding them, that they might be uh, sure of your love and your care for them, and that they might be given complete health again. Be with Harry Holder as she deals with a blood disorder. Even we are grateful that you have granted her a measure of recovery, but we pray that you would give to her a full recovery once again, restoring her to health and strength. Be with Pat as she undergoes some heart tests this week. We ask the Lord that you would be with those who conduct those tests, that they would have the wisdom and the knowledge necessary in order to do so properly, and that through all of the treatment that she receives, that she might have the certainty of good health. Keep her close to you, O oh Lord. <coughs> Help her to know of your love and that all things are under your control. We pray for Brian Green as he continues his journey with cancer. We know it. It's within your power, O oh Lord, to restore health and strength to him again, even though he is suffering from cancer. And we pray that you would do that. If it is your will, we ask that you would restore health and strength to him once again. You know the needs of these people better than we do, O oh Lord. And so we pray that you would attend to them and give them precisely what is needed in each individual case. Lord, in your mercy. Hear my prayer. And Heavenly Father, you are the one who has given life, and you alone are the one who is able to sustain us. So we pray for those who celebrate birthdays this week, Grant Banky, Sharon Brunler, Austin Murdoch, Tracy Dan, Linda Bone, to say reflect upon their years. May they remember the faithfulness that you have exhibited to your promises, that you have cared for them, provided for them in every way. And so then, through that remembrance, may they gain confidence for the future with the conviction that you will continue to stand at their side, that you will fulfill all the promises you have made to your people, that you will so empower them that they might uh, be used by you to have an impact on the lives of people around them with your love and your mercy. And so all of these petitions, O oh Lord, we bring before your throne of mercy and grace with confidence that you hear our prayers and certain that you will answer them, all for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. We continue then with the service of the sacrament, as you find it in your worship folder. The Lord be with you. 
and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks, thanks to Christ. Christ. It is truly a good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of On the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins, this do as often as you drink it. In remembrance of me. You may be seated. Those of you who are communing at home, you may receive the sacrament along as I serve the vicar and uh, Troy, our director of music. Take and eat the body of Christ given into death for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ given and shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. I would invite you then to stand for a closing prayer and for the benediction. May the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith of life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the sacrament, and we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us in faith toward you and in love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Receive then the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountain, verses 1 and 2. <laughs> 